mind kind of reflection. I'll have to look it up and uh, put it in the notes if you if you like what you're seeing. Um, but I'm just going to run around. And really, what this episode is going to be is not on uh, Let's Play uh, in any traditional sense, but it's going to be kind of my thoughts and reflections post MineCon. Because um, I really think it was an amazing uh, conference, uh, an amazing convention, and um, had an awesome, awesome time. But some things have come up, and some, you know, some things have been posted all over the web, and I just want to share my opinion. And, you know, if, if, if you're interested in listening to it, then listen on great if you're not that's fine too if you want to disagree well i'm preemptively telling you you're allowed to no problem whatsoever this is truly what i'm thinking kind of speaking from my experience and the things i saw and and really liked about it so that said let's kind of talk about minecon for me the conference was really three parts um, there were the sessions throughout the days, and you probably saw a lot of my vlogs about those. I think I put up six or seven of them, and they were pretty, pretty darn good. Um, you know, for something where this is their first conference, and I know already people are like, oh, you're making excuses. Yeah, I am. Uh, this is the first conference by a, a company that does a really great game. Um, uh, something I truly enjoy and have a blast with. They're not a, a conferencing company, and... You know, I've, I've been lucky enough uh, to, to work with multiple conventions and, and do some of that on my own. And I can tell you, it, it's hard. And so for a company's first conference, it was absolutely amazing. Um, in terms of without that quote-unquote excuse, um, it was really good. You know, I, I really have no complaints at all. And when I think back, you know, the cost. It, I, I got in early bird time or early special or, you know, regular special. Um, it was about 100 bucks, right? For the amount of entertainment, for the amount of information, for the, the amount of stuff going on, that, that price is unbeatable. It was really quite um, spectacular, the job that was done. So anyway, so there's three parts. So I have, I have the sessions, and I, I got to go to quite a few of them. Uh, really enjoy that. Then there's the just the Vegas experience in general, and, and being there with other people who love the same game you do. And you know what? It... That in and of itself um, was something that I'm, I'm going to remember for a long time. It's, uh, it's you, you know, you hear the, the cliche, or, or you, if you think it's cliche, you, you hear the thoughts that, you know, Minecraft is a community. Um, well, I can tell you what, it, it, it truly, truly is. Um, and that community isn't just the people doing YouTube videos. That community isn't just the famous people. It isn't just the, the millions of players. It, it's, it's the sum of everyone. Um, you know, I, I saw kids there. I saw folks who are significantly older than I am. And, I, you know, I'm no kid. Um, and every one of us is there because we had this game that we absolutely adore. And that was something really special uh the conversations while waiting in the lines and yes the joke uh, line con there were a lot of lines you know there, there's no sugarcoating that um and for for me i didn't get into you know the jinx line because i want to spend my time walking around the convention more than, than waiting um but that said some of the great conversations i had while waiting in line and the people i met uh, the kids in the costumes who were doing you know the cosplay uh the the elderly couple i met that you know i think they're in their 60s or 70s I'm sorry if i'm wrong and you were in your 40s and you hear this um, but that they play together and it's just something that they do. Uh, the folks that were there with their grandkids. I mean, it was just, it was something really, really cool about that. Um, and, you know, the other games I've played and have really gotten into, you know, I used to be really big into WoW, uh, stupidly big into WoW. And I never, I felt that community in my guild, but I never felt that with the player base as a whole. And this was something that universally everyone I met there was amazing. So that was the sessions, that was the meeting the people, the Vegas experience. And then the third part, which I'll, I'll talk about near the end, was the after party in the nether. And, you know, if you keep up to things on Twitter, uh, you've probably, ooh, lava, you've probably heard, you know, some, uh, some complaints about it. And, you know, security did get a bit um, tight, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but really, the big thing I want to talk about is in the last few days, uh, some things have come up, uh, some highly, highly negative things. Uh, about uh, people who work for Mojang, uh, who kind of put on the conference, as well as, on the flip side, some of the presenters. Uh, and if you can't get what I'm alluding to, yep, it's, uh, it's kind of that, that dirty laundry airing, the, the drama with, with Notch and Yogg's cast. So here's my, my take on it. One, um, I'm going to tell you right up front, there are people who love the Yogg's cast and can't stand Notch, and they've already decided they know what happened. There's people on the exact opposite side that don't really enjoy the Yogg's cast, and, uh, but they love Notch, and they've decided what happened. Um, I can tell you totally up front, 
I like both. I, you know, I enjoy the Ogs cast uh, quite a bit. I've, I've watched pretty much every one of their Minecraft related episodes over the past few months. I've gone back and, and watched the ones I missed. Um, and I, I enjoy Notch. Um, I think, you know, the game he's put together, the, the team he's built, um, I think is excellent. And, and whether or not folks, you know, you, you think he's a great public speaker or not is kind of not important to me. Um, now, again, everyone has the right to disagree, and, and that's totally fine. So the reason I bring this up is I kind of want to talk about um, some things that I saw at the conference. Um, you know, the dirty laundry notwithstanding, and, you know, it, it, it may be a big deal. And um, I'll, I'll talk about the Yogscast session in a minute here. But when I was at the convention, um, I hopped on the elevator late at night, and it was myself, someone wearing a Steve's head, and this kid. And the guy took off the Steve's head, and it was Simon from the Yogscast. And I can tell you, you know, you know when people are just totally dead on their feet. And and Simon was exhausted, absolutely beat. Uh, he'd been signing interviews all night and was just pretty much looking like a mess. Um, and the kid recognized him right away and got a huge, big, you know, smile on his face and said, "Hey, can can you sign my cap?" Um, and it would have been really easy for him to say no. Uh, but he said, "You know, I don't have any pens on me, and so I'm looking in my bag trying to find one." Um, they said, you know, I'd love to and, and keep playing or, you know, something pseudo inspirational for this little kid. And you could see the joy it was bringing this kid to meet this guy that was, um, what I'm guessing, uh, one of his Minecraft heroes. I mean, he was just super, super excited. In the end, he didn't get a signature. There, we, neither of us had a pen. None of us on the elevator had a pen. Um, this kid, he's maybe eight. Um, I was just really so excited to have talked to someone um, at the conference and you know that was his hero now i can tell you from that ride in the elevator simon didn't have to do that he could have just one he could have kept the steve head on um we were only going up a few more floors uh, i think we're on the 12th floor um or he could have just said no no way at all but he talked to the kid he smiled at him and i could see that the dude was dead on his feet so i'll give him that you know whatever we hear back and forth of the dirty laundry there's one example is it the, the, the shiny example? Is it the, you know, the norm of what happened at the conference? I have no idea, but that was my experience there. On the flip side, people from Mojang. Um, you know, I, I read some pretty negative comments about various folks, and what I can tell you is every single person I interacted with, and I, you know, I, I'm pseudo shy, I didn't really walk up and introduce myself to anyone, but I was around and I got to see a lot of awesome folks. Um, the people from Mojang worked their tails off. Uh, you know, whether it was uh, the crew that were actually working on the games or Minecraft Chick or any of the bunch, they worked non-stop. Uh, sorry if you're watching this and saying, what is he doing? He's playing around. I am just putzing around. Um, I figure this is more interesting than just watching me talk. Uh, actually, let's just explore. So the people there, though, were really, you know, just doing everything they can for the fans. Um, so it, it made me very sad, actually, when I saw... The, the tweets and and yes i will fully recognize and own at this point so far really it was kind of one way um the Augs cast hasn't responded yet to, to any of the drama and maybe they will maybe they won't um i have a feeling they will and maybe by the time this gets posted they already will have and this will already be out of date and there'll be more up-to-date news whatever um but it, it just made me sad because the conference itself whether or not there were issues between two different teams of folks whether or not you know what is looking like a performer's contract with the game owner type of deal um, didn't work out. For the most part, the fans were unaware of that, and we had a great, great time. Um, so, the Augscast panel. Um, yeah, there was cursing, um, and there was cursing in the, uh, you know, the, the, the preview videos. After that, though, you could tell they were they were working to hold their tongue. So could there have been better editing? Yes, absolutely. No doubt about it. Um, was it a family-friendly event? Yes. Flip side, people probably know the Augs cast. It shouldn't have been a surprise to anyone that they cursed. So again, this is one of those situations where I think both parties have probably a legitimate gripe, but a lot of room to legitimately, you know, give and take some and, and hopefully forgive. Um, and to, to be perfectly upfront... I heard some curses in some of the other sessions. And I won't say which because, you know, it's it's really not for me to call people out because that's not what I want to do at all because, frankly, I don't care. It didn't offend me. Um, but it did bother some kids and some families, and so that's just something for people to be aware of. And, again, this might be a learning thing. You know, maybe it's something that in the future Mojang has to be a little stricter in how they recruit folks. Sure. 
Um, on the flip side, maybe the people who are doing presentations need to be a little more aware of their audiences. Um, that's some of the things I've seen, you know, that it could be a cultural issue, you know, the slang, language, um, what's considered offensive in different countries. And England, you know, has, has some very different standards of um, how things are spoken than the U.S. Um, maybe that could have been a big part of this. And so it might actually just be some sort of, you know, hey, we need to listen and, and get to know each other is kind of where we're coming from first. That said, the conference was awesome. Um, so yeah, that's the conference. That's kind of some of the drama stuff. Now let's talk about this after party. Um, I kind of like this map. I might have to actually build something here. I might try to swim across this ocean. Um, ooh, that's that new sound everyone's talking about, the broken ankle. Ooh, ooh, I do not like that. All right, anyway. So the after party. Uh, the, the word I use for that after party is surreal. It was absolutely mind-boggling. Now, for those of you who read a lot of the tweets and follow up a lot of the celebs, there was some drama for some of the bigwigs. They could not get into the VIP area um, because of security. And security basically got nuts right around, I think it was after like 10, 30, 11. I got in at 10 um, because Prince Harry showed up. He rode his motorcycle in from Arizona. Um, him and Steve Wynn and I guess uh, Holly Madison or Holly, whatever her name is, were there. Um, and when you know, when you, when you have a prince and the owner of multiple casinos in, in Vegas show up, um, security gets to be a little uh, stringent. And so that's, I guess, kind of what happened. And, and for those folks, there's no doubt about it. They, they pretty much had a, an un, <laughs> they didn't have a good time because for the most part, they didn't get into the places that they, they should have been in. You know, the, you know, the VIPs, it, it really is, uh, it, it's kind of sucky if you can't get in. And to be honest, that's, again, that might be a planning thing. You know, you can't control when a prince shows up. You know, so for folks that want to be like, well, they should have known better. Well, you, you really, unless you're like friends with the prince or his media team, you, you don't really know when a dude's going to ride his motorcycle across state line and, and just come to a club. So let me go back to my experience at this club. Um, we got in around 10. We lined up in the back and we got in through kind of the, their back, not the VIP entrance, but their, you know, you already have tickets type entrance. So we didn't have to go through the front. And it was just fascinating. You have all these folks here, you know, probably Vegas locals or, or folks from California or, or people coming to visit um, who are obviously uh, quite well off in the money front. Um, they were dressed to the nines, ready to club, ready to party, have an awesome time. And then you have the Minecrafters. And we were great. We had a blast. Uh, but we definitely, as a whole, as a collective, uh, were not anywhere near the same attire level uh, of the folks who were at this club. So I think that was a bit of a, a shocker for the people who <laughs> paid to get in. Um, the place was huge. It was, it was absolutely massive. And, you know, I'm not big in the club scene, so I can't really speak from any other prior experience. So, you know, someone else might say, oh, it's a tiny little club compared to other places. But for, from my perspective, it was huge. I mean, there's two pools, a hot tub, um, giant uh, dance floor, big open, like, uh, cabana areas. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, come on, creeper. Overall, you know, it was just really, um, well, it was, it was big. Uh, Dead Mouse played. I think he came out around midnight. He lasted about two hours. Uh, word on the street was he broke his equipment. He was just jamming out too hard and, you know, broke something. And so he pieced out and they switched over to, to stereo, basically. Um, but he was great. You know, it sounded awesome. You know, hearing some of the stuff, uh, uh, hearing him mix uh, C418's music during the event and, and kind of just rocking it out and then blending it in with his, it was, it was really cool. Um, in terms of the, the folks, I think the, the people that weren't, you know, worried about the, the VIP area, not that crowd, you know, the, the average Minecrafter, and maybe the not so average, you know, and there's people there, uh, Paul Soares Jr., the Shaft was there. Uh, so, I mean, you know, the, the what I would call the Minecraft celebs were there. Um, so the Minecraft teacher, I got to meet him, that was awesome. Um, so they were there doing their thing, and I think we all had a, a really awesome time. Now, was it expensive? Yes, no doubt about it. Uh, the drinks were way overpriced probably for the average budget um but they weren't all that overpriced for vegas and so you know some of those complaints yeah i, I hear i hear folks what they're saying um i think maybe it's just a difference between you know matching expectations with the reality but it was surreal you know we're in this club uh, people are dancing um a bunch of us took over this booth that basically normally would cost about five grand to have drink service at and just to be able to sit at this booth. We just took it over. Um, and I, I was secretly hoping the whole time. Uh, I was really worried we were going to get bounced or charged. Um, but luckily, it never happened. Um, I mean, they have the bar or the bottle service there. And if you're not a big clubber, and again, I'm not, but if you, you know, they have bottle service there. And the bottles, um, you know, at some other clubs, a place I've been in New York or, or Baltimore, 
you can get a bottle of alcohol and it's about a hundred bucks and you know you split it with like four or five friends and it's a pretty reasonable way to spend the night you have a good time you hang out at the club you get your own booth awesome the cheapest bottles there were 500 bucks or 495 i think to be exact um all the way up to and this is really one of the things that kind of outlines how oh, look at that formation how surreal it is they had a bottle of champagne there a 30 liter bottle of champagne for hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah um, you know, I, I live in Arizona, and there's parts of areas out here where that's almost five houses. Maybe not in the nicest neighborhoods, but that's almost five houses for the cost of that one bottle. So it, it just shows you, it, it really, I think, um, threw a lot of folks for a loop because it was so not what anyone really that I was there with had ever experienced. And I think for some people that made it... Um, difficult uh, to, to kind of comprehend or to, to, to even cope with in some ways it's just it's a cool map um it's just really kind of I'll get a flower right now. Oop. um it's, yeah you can hear right now I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words and if you've listened to my other you know either podcasts or if you've listened to me on other videos i can pretty much ramble on and on it might not make the most sense but it, it's rare that i'm at a loss for words and even now a few days after that party um it just Surreal is the only thing that that makes sense. It's the only correct word for me and the experience I had there. Um, and for me, surreal is a good thing. You know, it, it was so out of the ordinary and so totally different that I enjoyed it just to be there and to be able to say, yeah, I was at a club where Prince Harry was and they had a $150,000 bottle of um, champagne. And yeah, I'm probably going to die here soon, in which case I'll just start exploring in the other direction. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of the three parts. We had the sessions. They were pretty good. Um, I did go to the music one. Uh, that was awesome. I really enjoyed just hearing folks talk about their experiences. I got some video editing ones, some uh, YouTube partner ones, and now it's kind of sad I don't remember what the fourth one I went to was. Um, but really, th the thing that I came away with leaving, and you know, when I was flying home that night, I was exhausted. I'd been up all sorts of crazy hours, and uh, and totally dead. Look, that's pretty harsh coloring. I haven't seen this yet. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, I was exhausted from, you know, basically partying too hard. Uh, so really, I'm not complaining because you can't really whine about having too much fun. Um, but flying home on the red eye and smiling. And the whole time I'm thinking, there's such a strong community with Minecon. And I don't know why. And so kind of a little insight into me uh, something that I don't you know I don't really frequently talk too much about what I do for a living or kind of my background um, my background is computer science is my undergrad degree um, and I left undergrad and I was like you know I want to work with people more and I went into higher education and so I have a master's degree in, in, in higher ed and when I was writing my thesis I actually wrote it about virtual communities and particular looking at Facebook um, so I wrote my master's thesis on Facebook and really looking at virtual communities and, and my day job now is working for residence life at a university, and that's fostering communities. And so while I'm no, you know, super expert, I, I do have some expertise and background with kind of getting an idea of, of what makes a community so strong and how to measure that and how to foster that. And I can honestly tell you, um, I don't know how we could re re recreate a Minecraft Um Part of it is the YouTubing, absolutely. You know, it lets so many people put their voice out there and interact and share it. Uh, part of it is the simplicity and yet the potential for complexity in Minecraft. As a game, Minecraft is pretty simple. I think we all can agree to that, and, and I, I don't think that would be any surprise. I mean, um, whether it's graphically simple, and it is. Um, whether it's a gameplay mechanic simple, um, it, it, it really, there we go, I died. So let's go the other way. Um, it's 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 a pretty simple game, but with you know with with redstone and the ability to to make these massive structures and and to, to really with pistons and basic basic machining, there's such complexity and possibilities there that it really is something that is uh, it's kind of awesome. Um, and so I, th I don't know if that's what drives the community. You know, it, it really is something for everyone. I don't know if it's the accessibility. It's a very because of the simplicity of it. It's it's a simple game to play, and lots of folks, whether they're four-year-old kids or eighty-year-old grandparents who've never played a video game in their life, ninety-year-old grandparents um, who've never played a video game in life, it's available to them, and, and, and it's, it's easy to learn. Um, maybe it's just the fact that you know folks who play these types of games are generally nice people. That could be it too. 
Um, overall, though, the, the community is something uh, to, to really be praised and, and, and to be fostered. And, and, and this is going to sound corny. I'm okay with that. And to be cherished. You know, it's, it's something that when, when the drama comes up, whether it's Yogg's cast a notch um, or someone you know, not changed something in the game that's big or, or whatever, when that comes up, I, th- I think really, um, I think this community is strong enough that it's, it's not going to be that big a deal at all. I, I think folks, you know, there'll be some lines drawn and I think people are going to go ahead and take their stand and they're going to have their favorites. And I think that's awesome because I think when you have your favorites, what that really means is that you care about the game or, or the community or the folks in it. And so in, in a lot of ways that, that conflict I'm totally cool with. And I think it's great. Um, I do get sad when it becomes personal attacks, you know, that, that, that's a bummer. Um, but I also recognize, you know, we're looking at a virtual and an online community. And virtual is not the right word anymore, you know, with this face-to-face type stuff going on with the, with the YouTubing and everything. It's, it's more than that. Oh, and by the way, I have a goal when I'm running around here. I'm looking for a mushroom biome. Um, but when, with all of those things, it's, um, it's just something really kind of special. And so that's, uh, that's kind of my mind con report. And yeah, it might be overly sentimental. Maybe I'm overly thinking things. Uh, perhaps you listen to this and you're going, you have no business rambling on or battling about things you're not involved with. True story. I, I really don't. And actually, if you follow me on Twitter, um, yeah, I, I, one of my tweets was basically kind of want people to keep their mouths shut and, and only be involved in what they need to be. Um, but I'm writing this because after, after reading the things going on and after having such a great, great time, I wanted to make sure that, you know, that message was out there that for whatever drama may or may not have happened, most of the fans, if not all of them, really had little to no idea. And what we saw and what we experienced was an amazing conference, an amazing convention. We got to meet awesome, awesome folks and, you know, celebrate this game that we, we all jointly love. And that that was Minecon for me. And so, um, yeah, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. Again, uh, this is Josh SDH and so me rambling. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much. And uh, we will catch you later. And as always, keep on digging. We'll catch you all later. <laughs> Bye.